Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. It means not have you to be without information, without knowledge. You know that ye were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the same self spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. And the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if there were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together having given more abundant honor to that part which lack, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? What a chapter. A lot of, lot of meat. 
uh, there to chew on and to uh, think about and to digest and to uh, put into practice. Some of those things that Paul says here, though, was uh, very pertinent, very relevant to the church at Corinth to whom he was writing to. But then some of those things that Paul spoke of, they are not pertinent. They are not uh, relative to us. They don't speak to us. Okay? And we're going to get into that in just a moment. Okay? And tonight, just want to do a kind of an open Bible discussion, open Bible study discussion on this, on the gifts of the Holy Spirit and upon the manifestation of the, of the Spirit, the body of Christ being uh, one body but having different uh, members, uh, having different gifts, but it all comes from the same Spirit. But let's begin with talking about these gifts of the Holy Spirit. And even before that, how does an individual receive the Holy Spirit? Through baptism. Through baptism? Okay. Where could we find a reference to that to support that phrase? You say you receive the Holy Spirit when you are baptized. Where would that be? Acts 2.38. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to speak up tonight. Acts 2.38. Alright, so let's get to there and let's see what Acts 2.38 says. It says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, or the gift of the Holy Spirit. So that gift of the Holy Spirit comes when? At baptism. At baptism, doesn't it? Okay. That... First of all, your sins are forgiven by coming in contact with the blood of Christ in Christian baptism that washes away your sins. You put to death the old man, the old woman, signifying that and being buried in the water graves of baptism. And then after your sins are all washed away, then something comes to take its place, doesn't it? And what is that? The Holy Spirit. You remember the demon that left a person and he went out and, and for a period of time and then came back and the man hadn't filled his body with anything else. And so that demon went out and got seven others more wicked than he and did what? Came back into the man, didn't he? Okay. Because when he left, he was supposed to replace something in it. And he didn't. Well here, when these sins that cause us to be separated from God, when they leave us, when they're washed away, then we don't come up out of the water empty-handed, do we? Because we're filled then with the Holy Spirit. We receive the Holy Spirit, don't we? And that we are now a Christian, aren't we? Now that gift of the Holy Spirit can be twofold. The gift can be salvation, right? Because you're now a Christian. You are now saved, aren't you? Your name is recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. But also that gift can be a, a gift of the Holy Spirit that is given to you at that time that can be developed in your uh, life and in your ministry. It can be a gift of leadership, it can be the gift of encouragement. Uh, it can be the gift of helps. Uh, it can be uh, the gift of benevolence. It can be the gift of teaching. Uh, it can be the gift of preaching. And there's a few other gifts that we have in the Bible that speaks about 
that you might be doing in the church. And not everybody receives the same gift, do they? Not everybody receives the gift of healing, do they? And we wouldn't receive the gift of healing today anyway, would we? Why? They received it there in the church at Corinth. Paul said that, said healings. They also had tongues and the ability to interpret tongues. They had prophecy. They had wisdom, the okay. gift of faith. Can I answer? <laughs> Are we too many generations away? Oh, because no, the apostles passed it on to one generation and then that was it, right? Are you asking or telling? <laughs> I'm telling. Okay. <laughs> okay, Rebecca says that we are too many generations away to be able to speak in tongues and to be able to heal and raise people from the dead. Do you agree with that? She said we're too many generations away to be able to speak in tongues and to heal people and to raise people from the dead. We're not apostles. We're not apostles. You sure? You're not. Okay. I'm not either. We're disciples. We're disciples, but we're not apostles. Now, did the apostles have the ability to heal people? Yes. Did they have the ability to raise people from the dead? Yes. Did they have the ability to speak in tongues? Because they did on Pentecost, didn't they? Okay. And, but why is it that they had the ability, but we don't? So we weren't there. It ended when they died, except they could pass it on. Am I right? one, one individual? Or one. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. The thing is, the apostles had what was called these, quote unquote, temporary gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay? They were able to use them. And the reason why was to authenticate the message that they were preaching. Because the church was young in those days. Okay? And they were able to do this to show that what they had preached was the truth. Well, they had that ability, but then also they could lay their hands on someone else. And they could give them that same ability that they had. That would be to um, perform miracles, to give sight to the blind, to be able to make a lame man walk, to heal somebody of leprosy, raise somebody from the dead. Uh, to speak in tongues, to interpret what was spoken in tongues. And Paul also said, if there's going to be speaking in tongues, there must be what? An interpreter. an interpreter. If there's not an interpreter, then there's no need to be speaking in tongues. Okay? Hey, these are things that Simon the Sorcerer wanted to buy. All right, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Good point. You About two steps ahead of it. But hang on to that. Hang on to that. All right. They had these temporary gifts that they were able to lay hands on and to give it to that next generation. And then the apostles died, like Huey said, and then Rebecca said, we're far removed from, those, from that generation, aren't we? What happened to the next generation that the apostles laid their hands on their head and gave them those temporary gifts? Were they able to pass it on to the next generation? No. It stopped right there, didn't it? When that Second generation, the first generation after the apostles, when they died, so did these temporary gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gift of prophecy, the gifts of healings, the gift of speaking in tongues and interpreting in tongues, of raising people from the dead and drinking a deadly poison and not dying and all that. And there's a few listed at the end of Mark's Gospel, along with the gift of, um, of wisdom and faith here that Paul mentions in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Okay, So those are not permanent gifts of the Holy Spirit. But the gift of teaching, the gift of helps, the gift of benevolence, the gift of preaching, the gift of leadership, those are what we call permanent gifts of the Holy Spirit that you and I have, that God has given to us. And that we all don't have the gift of preaching, we all don't have the gift of teaching, 
We all don't have even the same talents, do we? Now, that's different from the spiritual gifts, but it's not all the same, is it? Would you want me to go over there and to play the piano tonight at the beginning of the service? No. You would? <laughs> no, you wouldn't. You'd want Charlene, wouldn't you? Because I can't play. I mean, I, I see the ivory. I, I, you know, I can find middle C, and I can go up and down, tell you what, um, note they are, sharps and flats, but as far as putting that together and playing a piece, I doubt very seriously I could play Mary Had a Little Lane. It'd take me a while. It will. I could play maybe by ear, you know, piddling around a little bit, but it'd take a while. And we can't sing Mary Had a Little Lane, can we? That's not in the hymn book. Okay. All right. So we receive the Holy Spirit when we are baptized. Acts 2.38. We also receive that gift of salvation, that we're now a Christian, we're now adopted into the family of God, and we receive that uh, gift of the Holy Spirit that we use in the, in the body of Christ, that we use within the church. Well, go if you would in Acts chapter 8. And this is what Tony was talking about, Simon the sorcerer. Let's read about that because... These gifts cannot be purchased. Okay? You can't buy these gifts. You can't go to Walmart, go down aisle 14, and buy the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's just not there. You can't order it online through Amazon. Okay? And that's not the way that it's done. Let's uh, pick up at chapter 8. Um, start with verse... Five. We'll go to verse 5. It says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria. And this is right after um, the uh, stoning of, of Stephen and where Saul went in and started raising havoc in the church. Everybody left except for the apostles. It says, And Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Now, did, then we go and see for unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out, many that were possessed with them and many taken with uh, palsies and there were lame, were, were healed. There was great joy in the city. He's able to do this, okay? Uh, uh, Philip uh, is. Now, Philip is not an apostle, is he? This is a different Philip, isn't it? He's an evangelist. Isn't this Philip the evangelist? Isn't this one of the seven that we read about in Acts chapter 6? Or is it the apostle? Well, Philip is mentioned there in verse 5 of chapter 6, isn't it? It says in Philip and, uh, and Prochorus, Nicanor, and Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, and what did they do? The apostles did what? Laid their hands, Laid their hands on them. So Philip can do what? He can do these miracles, can he? And that's what he's doing here in, in Samaria. Again, to back up the preaching that he's doing of Jesus Christ. Now verse 9, But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the city used sorcery. Now what sorcery? Witch, witchcraft? Yeah. And witchcraft, is that good or bad? Bad, it? Where does that come from? Yeah. Yeah. Comes from the devil, doesn't it? Comes from Satan. Okay. So he's doing something that he shouldn't be doing. But there are people that deal with witchcraft today. There are people that do palm readings, and you go and you'll see them sometimes. They'll have this crystal ball or whatever. And, and we talked about it uh, about a month ago the Ouija boards that were very popular when we were growing up that you go to people's homes and they have those little seances and all of that. 
You wouldn't want me near a Ouija board. I, I wouldn't even get near one. And I wouldn't want my palm to be red, and I wouldn't want to uh, go and look to a crystal ball. But you know something else? I wouldn't want to waste my time reading the horoscope either in the daily newspaper. Because that's junk. That's over there. And, oh, for fun, I guess, maybe I might crack open a, a cookie at a Chinese restaurant and see what my fortune is and then just laugh at it and throw it away. That ain't, that ain't nothing either. Okay? And those numbers on the back, I don't know what they are, and I don't know what's written in Chinese either. I just throw it away pay no attention to it. But I do enjoy the cookie, you know. It is nice to have the cookie, but not, I don't care about the paper. Verse 10, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. They thought that he was doing good, didn't they? But he really, he, he wasn't. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Now notice what happens next. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. So here was a great victory, wasn't it? It's about like the song I think Narrow Road sings about Jesse Taylor. You know, they baptized Jesse Taylor in Cedar Creek last Sunday. Satan lost a good right arm. You know, here Satan lost an arm, didn't he? He lost Simon the sorcerer. But now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Why is Peter and John going to Samaria? Samaria, are they all Jews? No. No. They're half Jews and half Gentiles, aren't they? And the gospel first came to whom? To the Jews. But didn't Jesus say, Oh, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the utmost parts of the world? He did, didn't he? Well, this is taking place in what Jesus said, but they wanted to make sure Peter and John did. So they go down there and we get to verse 15, who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Well, I, now I thought they had received it when they were baptized. Did they? The answer is yes. They did receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. They received their salvation. They received the particular gift that God wanted them to have, but they did not have the ability of these temporary supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay? In verse 16, For as they were fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their hands on them, certain people there in that church in Samaria who are now Christians, and they received what? The supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now they're able to do miracles. They're able to raise people from the dead. They're able to bring about healings, speak in tongues, and also to interpret tongues that are spoken. Now here's where Simon gets into trouble. And this is what Tony was talking about in verse 18. And when Simon saw that through laying on of hands the apostles, through the apostles' hands that the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that whom, whomsoever I lay hands, that they may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thy heart may be forgiven thee. 
For I perceive that thou art in all gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. And then, from the rest of that chapter is where you see the conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch. That Philip was called by the Spirit to go up and to join him. And you probably have heard that story numerous times and I'll be able to read it tonight before you go to bed. Okay? So you see these people had received the Holy Spirit upon baptism, but they had not yet received the supernatural gifts, had they? But when did they receive it? When the apostles came down, when Peter and John came down, because Philip couldn't pass it on, could he? Because Philip was that person that had received it by laying on the hands of the apostles there in Acts chapter 6, but he couldn't do it, could he? If he could, he would have, wouldn't he? But he couldn't. It was only the apostles. And two of them were there, Peter and John. Okay? So we're going to hold off right there until next week, unless y'all have some, some questions. Something that maybe might be a little muddy. I'm gonna, I want to clear up any muddy water tonight. We'll use a bar of soap. How's that? Anything? I do have a question. Okay. Okay. When Simon, um, he was baptized. Okay, the sorcerer? Mm -hmm. He was baptized. And then he's asking, let me pay for this because that's what he knew. And isn't that like with Christians today? You don't have to know everything right at once. You just have to know that you're a sinner and you need Christ and you need to know how to get your sins washed away, this, that, and the other. And then you're fed the milk of the word, right? Mm -hmm. And that's basically what they were doing there to him, showing him, you know, you're wrong. You can't do this. And started him with the milk of the word. Well, Is that yeah, sort of? He was one that wasn't chosen to receive the um, manifestation of the, of the Spirit for those temporary gifts. Other right. people were. But when he saw that just by the laying on of hands, he thought, you know, well, I can do it. Because he was a sorcerer before, you know, mm -hmm. and he dabbled into that. And he thought, well, if maybe I can purchase this because you can purchase, you know, uh, magical stuff that you can use. Uh, you know, that you even today musicians will purchase different things that they use in their uh, performance. But it's an illusion. But anyway, and with this, he thought, well, I'll be able to do this and I can lay hands. And it was more of him focusing on himself being noticed than it was of Christ in the Spirit gotcha. being noticed. Okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Anything else? Next week, I want you to look at Acts chapter 10. And I want us to look at the conversion of Cornelius. And also notice uh, at the end of that chapter, beginning at verse 44, there is a phenomenal thing that takes place there in the house of Cornelius, and we're going to talk about that. And then also, uh, we're going to look at uh, Acts chapter 19 next week uh, as well, because there's an interesting uh, story there about baptism and about a baptism that they did not receive the Holy Spirit. But they had been baptized, but they had not received the Holy Spirit. They didn't know that the Holy, Holy Spirit existed. And so there was some teaching and rebaptism done there. And we're going to talk about that next week. And then finally, we get more into chapter 12 about the various gifts and how that we can use those gifts for the edification of the body of Christ. Okay? And our closing song tonight.